What's up, everybody? I'm Scott. And I'm Jason. And you're listening to Season 5, Liquid Carnage. Season Cinco, mi amigo. Our podcast is a kindergartner. Yes, or at least finishing up preschool, one of the two. The little show that could, maybe doesn't all the time, sometimes gets around to it but ultimately gets you to where you want to be. The journey has been, um, has, has survived a uh, separation of us. It has survived uh, a temporary shutdown of us. It survived fires It survived everything. And it's still going. Right. I mean, you think strong. about, you think about everything that's happened over the last five years, all the things we've endured, uh, we've grown, we've laughed, we've cried, we've lost. And I think you and I have, shared a lot of that because a lot of that affects our lot it has affected our lives and and we've used this as a platform to kind of sort through a lot of those uh life adventures and and frankly we started this podcast i mean we called it liquid carnage because our thought was two guys two friends really good close friends at a bar having a drink and just talking about life yeah that's yeah, how we it, started this. And frankly, we've kept it going for now four full years and starting our fifth year, dude. It's crazy. And you know, what's funny is, is the most of the feedback I get aside from our EP uh, is people saying, you sound like two guys in a bar. And that's unsolicited. Just two guys talking. And I appreciate that. It's like, that's what, actually what we're going for. So uh, the fact that everybody's ridden with us this far, as far as we can tell, uh, that they do sometimes enjoy our shows. And, and they indulge us when we want to get a little weird, a little deep. Uh, well, we appreciate that. Well, and I think that the message and, and that closeness uh, between two friends must carry over throughout the world because it, we are not only listened to in the United States or North America. Yeah. I mean, I mean we, we, we are heard all over the world, uh, Russia, China, Australia, South Africa. I mean, anywhere in the world we have been listened to and so people can at least on some level relate to two friends talking about life and what it means and, and enjoying themselves. It, it, it's a universal theme. That or it's um, three letter government agencies listening in on us from those countries trying to figure out if there's any secrets that we're telling or if we're just two idiots talking. It, it could be both. I it mean, could it's be a both. combination. We, we prefer the happy cheery idea, but it, there's always the possibility of that weird. Well, and we've evolved. I mean, we, we've evolved. Remember, I mean, three years ago we were doing or I was doing lists. And that's now true. Oh, my I mean, God. How many times did Tom just get pissed at you for doing a list? I do a list. And yet yeah. some of our most famous topics were lists. But that's beside the point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't always want to talk about conspiracy theories anymore. It's nope. evolution. Nope. Nope. I, I agree. I agree. You know, speaking of evolution, it's funny that you bring that up because uh, I was – Driving in the car the other day, Janice and I, uh, Janice had to buy a car last week uh, because she popped two tires in her van and it, bent, it was a whole thing. So the van that she had had to go. Okay. So she had to evolve in this scenario since we're going to talk about evolution uh, and buy her first brand new car. She never bought a car before last week. Okay. And uh, she bought a little Hyundai Kona. Oh, those are nice. They are. I am surprisingly uh, happy with it for being a small little sedan crossover type SUV. Not quite a car, not quite an SUV. Um, that thing can move. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, we we also have a Hyundai. Um, our, our car is a Hyundai as well. Mm-hmm. And it is still, we've had it now six months and Noreen still talks about how much she loves her car. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it's, it's crazy to me. Like, we we took a trip to Havasu yesterday uh, to go try a Cuban restaurant and I, I took it on 40 and put it in sport mode. Cause she had talked about that. She put it in sport mode. She dropped her daughter off for the summer and how she just cooked. And I was like, yeah, whatever. And then I got in it and having an all wheel drive car. I see the appeal now. I see the oh. appeal of all wheel drive and a little turbo in a sport mode. Cause you can move. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, but it's also got enough room for her to travel or, you know, pack things up and go. Yeah. Okay. Let's go with that. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we still have my truck, so that's the important thing. Yeah, that's um, true. But, you know, so we're driving to Havasu yesterday and, you know, she's working at homework and I'm listening to the radio and, you know, I'm scanning through Sirius and I appreciate how Sirius has like the different decade stations, like early on, like the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s and so on. And if you kind of scan through it, you can just kind of hear that evolution of music. 
And it got me thinking, man. Some people say the evolution of music, not so good. Probably should have stopped evolving a long time ago because everyone's generation has the best generation of music, if you ask them. Um, well, I, I would venture to say that I, I think that that's probably very true because how many generations when they define the music that defines them is usually the earlier years when they were, you know, growing as individuals and growing and the fun that they had that was unadulterated because they didn't have a care in the world. Yeah. And, you know, you like I look at teenagers 10 years ago when I was in my, my 30s and my late 20s and 30s and what they were listening to. I was like, God, this is terrible. Um, like T Pain with the what's that? Where they they speak into it, the synthesizer voice thing. Yeah, and then they rapped into that, and you found out that these guys really couldn't couldn't sing or rap, and uh, you know, just because something evolves doesn't mean it's better. It doesn't mean that it's uh, something that I want to take part in. And the perfect example when I was scanning through music uh, was an ad for the next Fast and Furious movie. Is there and, a, wait no the, those guys died right that's over no 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 they have uh they're doing it two more oh my goodness they, they wow. have to finish it off at 10 from what i understand and okay this, this one was supposed to come out last year uh but the vid put it on the shelf so now they are uh ramping it up since theaters are reopening go out get ready the fast or the saga continues it's now a saga and i have to give these guys credit for their marketing tactics of evolution because if you think about the first fast and furious movie that came out 20 years ago now because it was the summer of 2001 uh it was a movie about racing yeah it was a a guy trying to break up a crime ring based on racing yeah 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 and so was the sequel it was a crime ring about racing then the third one got a little weird we went to tokyo but it revolved around racing. And I don't know, I was like port four or five. It's when they, it's when they moved on from racing and started getting into smuggling, uh, spy stuff. And then, then Ludacris and the rock got introduced and it's, it's borderline absurd. Now it's a popcorn movie, but I I feel like like the evolution of this whole platform of this this show specifically should have died a long time ago, probably after they went to Brazil. Okay, you know, so I, I, I just do you think that something sometimes things can over evolve or try to stay relevant and just not? Well, I, I think that in, in in situations like that, I really do think you cannot just regurgitate the same story over and over. So evolution is just probably natural that you have to push it further or push it in a different direction. Otherwise, it would get stale. Yeah, but how do you go from from? a undercover cop in a drag racing ring in Los Angeles to an international spy James Bond esque thriller. Yeah, that, that I don't know. Um, but then again, I, I, I find it the same way and, and you're going to think I'm, I'm hypocritical, but I kind of find it the, the same kind of story uh, franchise as the mission impossible movies where you started with one movie and then, now you evolve it so far that, I mean, it's almost like you have to carry the stunts bigger. You have to, like, like on the Fast and Furious where they're jumping between a building to another skyscraper, you know, or in a car. Or, dri- yeah, driving the car off a cliff and then a helicopter comes in and, you know, shoots the thing down. You have to go bigger and bigger and bigger because that people have already seen it two movies yeah. ago so you can't just yeah. do the same thing same with mission impossible you know but, now he's basically you know hanging on to jets flying and he's you know jumping off buildings and you know but going to crazy. the credit of mission impossible just to play devil's advocate in this in this example yes that's Did getting more that's getting more and more extreme but in the title of the movie it's mission impossible you know, whatever mission, whatever harebrained scheme they're going to cook up to make a movie out of, it's going to be damn near possible. And Tom Cruise needs his big stunts. Well, they say that that's a four billion dollar franchise. I'm sure Fast and Furious is probably even bigger than that. Oh, I'm so sure what does that too. tell you? That money talks. So I'll evolve anything if money talks. You know, and that, that's the, that, that's a very good point. You know, it's funny because I fall down these these rabbit holes on the YouTube, and I, I fell into the one about uh, the Friday the Thirteenth franchise. 
And I thought it was so interesting because the first one uh, was made with very little money, very low budget for the late 70s, early 80s. And it did very well at the box office. And I remember the interview with the producer said, uh, the studio called me the Monday after the opening weekend and said, yep, this made money, uh, make a sequel. And that happened for like the next six movies. Like that's where they all came out. So like, I want to say fairly close to each other because they recognized what kind of money it was going to make, even if it wasn't that much for back in the day. And they just kept capitalizing off it. And that was a case of, they had to evolve that too. Uh, when you look at going from it's uh, Jason Voorhees, mother in the first one to how Jason progressively got more supernatural powers as he was introduced as the killer uh, into Jason X, where he was in outer space. Well, you know, and it, it gets me thinking about something because how much of that is also dependent on the, the writer of the story kind of keeping true to the genre, not the genre, but keeping true to the original thought process of the characters and the script. Um, we've seen that where they switch writers, they script screenplay writers, <clears throat> and it totally misses, right? And you're like, yeah. well, what the hell? It's all the same characters. It's all the, oh, different writer. They didn't, cl- you know, they didn't connect to what the what the working formula was. Yeah, and I think that's the hard part too when you're talking about movies. It's same with music as well. Uh, when you have a new writer into an established franchise, if that writer doesn't fully understand the tone or the the character arc in some scenarios, it falls flat. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, and I think the new Star Wars trilogy is a very good example of that. Uh, they tried to they tried to finish it off uh, with J.J. Abrams, and it wasn't a terrible trilogy, but I feel like he missed the tone on on the new characters trying to wrap up the story of the original characters. Well, and and part of that I'm wondering too is um, he was definitely right. Are they the, the, that the last three were definitely writing toward a different audience yeah. because I, I can tell you those were not written to the audience of my youth that no, started no. being fans of star Wars. They yeah. were definitely not, those movies were definitely not um, uh, inspiring to me as an original star Wars fan. I, I wouldn't say, I mean, I went and I saw them, but I didn't see them right away. Like I didn't wait in line to go. You see didn't them. go with this for opening night for the first one. Nope. Huh? I thought no. you were. No, no, I didn't. Oh, maybe. Well, maybe I was. I know I wasn't there for number two or number three. Uh, you know, the the second and third movies. I didn't even watch the second. Oh, I, how about this? The third one came out when I first watched the second one. Oh, OK. Now, uh, you know, that evolution, though, let's be honest. You know, uh, it's so funny. We went out on Saturday night and we went to a bar and Noreen and I are sitting there and on one side of us are there these three girls are celebrating a birthday at 30 right uh-huh. and then on the other side of us there's three girls that are 25 and you can tell that the interests of the 25 and 30 year olds in terms of what they were doing at the bar was totally different than what the interest of me at 50 was looking at being at the bar yeah and now, I get that completely. Now yeah. the thing is, we started talking to them, and we, you know, we were conversing with them, and we, sh- you know, we we cheers them, and then we interacted just fine. But I realized that the evolution is you do have to kind of evolve for the young, because the old, they like you said, they like the '80s music, right? Or they like the '90s music. They don't want to hear the 2020s music. So the evolution probably is because the younger people have different takes on the world than us older folks yeah you know it's, that's a very that's a very good point it's i i have uh hits one on my favorite station because it's the today's pop and I, i'm starting to really wonder why i have that on my on my uh, favorite stations in my truck because i never listen to it and when i do i get annoyed because the music sucks <laughs> you know well what, who was the comedian that was talking about old people and they said look at what age does it just say you know what i've got the clothes i've got and I'm not changing them. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I've evolved uh, wardrobe wise as far as I'm going to evolve. And I'm wearing the shirts for the next 40 years of my life or the last 40 years of my life. You know what yeah. I mean? That's, yeah. that's, that's what I feel like George. sometimes with music, right? Yeah. Like um, my in-laws, they love the, 
the like country music from like the forties and fifties and have not moved off that in 30 years. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. they're locked that there's no evolution left. Yeah. Good for them. You know? And <laughs> my grandpa was the same when he was alive. Cause he, he had all the old records and all the old Abin Costello movies and Bob Hope movies. And it was cool. Like, I can appreciate them now that I'm a little bit older and I can understand the difference uh, of what the, the themes and, and the social norms were back then versus what they are now. But man, well, some of the stuff today. Well, and you know, isn't that funny though? Like I I've seen remakes of classics. Have you, have you seen this where they do a remake of a classic and I think, well, wait a minute, you already have the classic. So why don't you just show the classic? Yeah, because the kids won't appreciate it. They won't appreciate it, right? Because they have to evolve. They have to make it exciting. They have yeah. to, you know, uh, they have to adapt the story to the times, you know, of um, of who the new generation is. Because was, was Ben Hur is the perfect example. Because they redid that a couple years ago, didn't they? Yes, exactly. Bombed. Ben Hur it was bombed. Different. Yeah. Um, another one that bombed was um, they did a remake of Conan the Barbarian. Yeah, bomb. and they didn't even stick to the story. Yeah, I yeah. mean, now as a as a pure as a pure nerd, I thought, why didn't you just remaster the original with uh, with Arnold Schwarzenegger, which was a fantastic movie? You could have just up you know updated that, not mastered it or remastered the movie I, or digitalized it or something. But no, they made a whole different movie, and why? Because all oh, young people aren't going to watch and old or a old movie with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. Well, also, let me throw this at th- this idea at you, too. Did you ever watch a movie when you were young and think, God, this is so good. This is great. I love this movie. It's the best of all time to watch when you're older. Like, oh, God, this is terrible. Yes. Yeah, and that's probably a scenario where, like, the studio looked at it, and they maybe, maybe they thought about it, like, no, you know what? No. It's not going to work. You know, a- another good example of, of that, of a situation that would work, was the Planet of the Apes. Um, they tried it back in 2001 with Marky Mark, and I think it did all right, but it wasn't awesome. And then 15 years later, they came out with this new trilogy with a whole different take on it. And I think it, it's more built for the world we have today for kids to understand and appreciate uh, this, this movie. This now, series. have you have you seen the original Planet of the Apes? Um, I, I've seen um, I've seen them off and on. Like so, you've seen the one with Charlton Heston. Yeah. Okay. So when you watch that original Charlton Heston movie, the graphics are worse, right? The makeup is not very good. Yeah. But the story was a compelling story. It took them forty-five years to finally get another compelling story. Yeah, but to make com- Planet of the Apes. But the compelling story they told, and and the and the one and the James Franco one was a completely different story and it takes place in modern day earth, not on some distant planet. And I think that's the kind of stuff that makes that kind of evolution of a story is it's what makes people want to go back and see more. Yeah. Like the planet of the apes with J- James Franco was, would have been the pre 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 um, sequel of the original planet of the apes because it, it happened thousands of years before the original planet of the apes happened yeah but you can get away with it because people you know the 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 original movie you just fall into it right but the this movie was like well how did this even happen it was it was it was a great way of taking it on yeah yeah and and that's what that's what made me appreciate it and I, i was okay with the first one but the second one i really loved uh, and the third one was cool too. Uh, you know, I, I just thought they did a great job with with evolving that story and and taking a classic franchise and evolving it and rebooting it into something that I think makes more sense for today's world. And I understand that there are cases of evolution like that where medicine has to evolve. We've seen that over the last year, especially with with COVID nineteen. Um, so many things in this world have to evolve to move forward to keep it fresh, to keep it um, in in front of everybody, but. Some stuff just because you can does not mean you should. Well, isn't that the truth? I mean, I because I, because I agree with that. I think some people are so focused on well, we've got to do something different. We got to do something out there. We've got to. No, you don't. Yeah. Like, like yeah. for example, the Bond movies. Remember during the eighties and nineties, the gadgets got so ridiculous that you know, it just got so ridiculous that it took away from the story of just 
a spy trying to stop a bad guy. Yeah. Well, then when they, when they came in with Daniel Craig, they came back to just a badass guy. Yeah. He didn't have a lot of gadgets. He had to, you know, basically do his wits and his strength, and that was it. And it, it made the story more authentic, I think, and it kind of took it back to, oh, yeah, that's what James Bond no, is. I agree, I, and I liked Pierce Brosnan as Bond, but I think Daniel Craig is the quintessential Bond, and I'm sorry he's leaving after this one or whenever it comes out. Uh, I just think it's a great – he does a great job of that. He's evolved the character to a more masculine, uh, primal, I would say, uh, version of Bond. Well, and, and to the reality is, Scott, if you, rev, uh, if you ever get a chance to read the books, the books that – Daniel Craig is the best of the Bonds to play the representation of the character from the book. A scarred, mm-hmm. flawed, emotionally messed up guy – who had no qualms with killing, you know, that, that was the authentic bond. So they, I mean, coming back retro, it was like a full circle thing. Well, you're right though. How many times and bigger and bigger? And I gotta do... No, you don't. Sometimes you can, you know, simple, simple. You don't have to necessarily go way off, off track to evolve something. Yeah. And I, th- I think people mix up rebooting with evolving too. And, uh, we'll just say Batman's a perfect example of that. It seems like uh, they're always trying to tell a better Batman story. Uh, Christian Bale uh, had probably the best three of the movies next to Michael Keaton's, and now Robert Pattinson is coming out with a dark, gritty version of Batman that's a different, I don't want to say an evolution, but a different, a rebooted version, a different type of story. And I can appreciate that with comics because they do certain series. And I feel like those writers will take it as far as they can go and they'll say, all right, well, it's done. Uh, we're still going to call it Batman, but we're going to have a different writer now. So the stories will essentially go back to square one and, and just start the series over again. So um, I can appreciate that. And I think it gives, it gives a fresh perspective on characters that doesn't necessarily – that wouldn't necessarily get a chance if, if you tried to keep evolving the same story. Yeah, and I think you're right. I mean the younger people probably could relate more to a – Robert then going with Christian Bale or going with someone else. I mean, that, that makes well, I don't sense know. Yeah. Me. But Batman being middle-aged, like he was in the Zack Snyder justice league, I completely got that. You're tired. You got to wear that heavy costume. You're pissed off, but you're a millionaire and you got to save the world. Like you're generally annoyed at most things at that age. And I know that because I'm genuinely annoyed at most things my age. So yeah, I, I could appreciate and I could identify with that Batman. Yeah, I, I, and I mean, I, I that with music, this is probably um, a lot of times though, they say that the but if you listen to the very simple impressions, you know, music has changed. I think that's why to just way out there. Changed music, but it wasn't because he was playing. He produced the music was different, and you know, and I don't know who out there is that leading musician that is changing. Put out. It sounds like everything is kind of different, and you know, the same as everybody yeah. else, just a different sound on the voice. Yeah, you know it's funny, it's, and, and they they make a great they, a great comparison when you talk about the evolution of music. Like a Beyonce song now has like fifteen writers, and they compare it to a Queen song where Freddie Mercury wrote and composed everything. You know, it's it's yeah, okay, you know, and and I like Beyonce, but Beyonce beyond what has worked for her. Yeah, well, I think I when think she's evolved. Why, why we have to constantly try to evolve it? When I say you do, and oh, I agree, um, I agree, but you have to evolve it. Um, but like you said, we have to, a lot of things do. Well, you have to stay relevant because you, as, as babies are born, they grow up, and when they grow up, they have certain tastes. And if you want to have them be a fan of Beyonce in this case, you have to start appealing to the younger generations that are younger and younger. I think about how many of these, you know what I get strub- troubled with and I can tell that I'm getting old is when I look at a People magazine and I don't know any of the people. Yeah. Oh, I just had the conversation anymore. over the weekend. 
I get so annoyed with that. I was like, I don't know who this fucking person is. Yeah, and, like and how many of those people are people or TikTok people? I've never. Oh yeah, where they came from, but they are famous on YouTube and TikTok, and why? Yeah. Because that generation, that is where the great entertainment evolution. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's funny because you bring that up. I, I I ran into some friends that, in Home Depot over the weekend that are moving to Arkansas, and they were like, "Oh yeah, that's uh, we're moving to the same town the Dugers are from." I was like, "I don't know who that is," and she's like, "You know, the Dugers." Like, no, I don't. Oh, the Dugers. I do. I know. I know. All right. Well, they're moving to the same town as those people. They're like, they have like 19 <laughs> kids. Like, all right. Yeah. They're famous for fucking. Good for them. You know, it's, I, it's like, you're right. How people get their information, how they process it. But uh, reality TV has evolved to where everyone that wants a show can get a show, gets one. And it's, you just have to kind of process it at that point, I guess, you know? We were, um, we were watching something on TV and they did a commercial for, uh, the Real Housewives of New Jersey. I thought that was so odd to me was why this show is popular with these five or six, you know, middle-aged, 30 to 50-year-old women yelling and screaming at each other and insulting each other. Like, why do we want to see that? Because they identify with it. Maybe that's what people want to see now. Yeah, well, I think people It's almost like they want to see it, though, because they just want to have someone else's dysfunction make them feel better that my dysfunction is not as bad as these people. Oh, I think that's a lot of it. I think a lot of it <laughs> is um, they're just as dysfunctional as we are, but they have cameras, so I don't have to feel as bad about myself because I can watch this person do the same stupid-ass thing. Well, and I mean, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm with you. I, I, I wish I was better about evolving with the times so I don't feel so... Like when I was out th- on Saturday and I was looking at these groups, I was like, I was so amazed that they were so energetic and they were just looking at life with like having fun and being crazy. And I was like, yeah, but I'm just not at that point, I guess, anymore where I want to do that. Like I was just, we were just having a nice drink, chilling and we were, we got this energy from them, but I thought that's good that I'm getting the energy from them, but I wouldn't do that. Like I wouldn't yeah. uh, change how I do things, evolve. Um, you know, and there's that great thing. You either evolve or die, but I don't know. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny because you know, our buddy Dean and I were talking about that at lunch the other day. And, you know, we have other friends moving to Phoenix. And we were, he was lamenting that it's it's there's very few of us up here that are left. And I said, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the evolution of things, though. It's we, we had a good run for a decade, if you think about it, with everybody we've been close to. Yep. And now uh, th- things are fractured. Everyone's just moving on and doing different things. That's not bad. Hell, man, the Eagles took a 13-year vacation and got back together and killed it. It doesn't mean it's gone forever. It just means you have to evolve. You have to get with the times. And I said, you know, we don't have to go out to the bars till 2 a.m. anymore. We haven't done it in years. And we don't, frankly, I don't know about you, but I don't want to do that anymore. So this isn't a bad thing. It's just the natural course of life. Well, how about this? Maybe our evolution is not to something new, but something to rebuilding the the greatness of what was old. Yeah, and that's sometimes that's what evolving is. You just gotta, you know, tinker with it and and make it you know next level. And I will say this: most people, no matter what your age, when they go to the Eagles concert, I don't necessarily need to hear new stuff from you guys. Yeah. You know, I, <laughs> play your old stuff, man. That's play why Hotel I'm California. I don't want to hear your off. your new hip hop album that you're trying to you know bring out. Just play the stuff that made yeah. you one of the great bands. You know, yeah. I want to hear "Take It Easy." You know, <laughs> yeah. Lion Eyes, whatever. Do not try to show me the new one. I don't care about that. Yeah. Any rate, <laughs> uh, do you have a problem with with uh, some franchise you like that's evolving? Maybe not in a good way, like the Fast Saga. Uh, we want to hear about it. Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. All at Liquid Carnage. Uh, do you want to help our EP Tom evolve in the Denver area? Uh, hit him up at Liquid underscore EP on Twitter and Instagram. Well, and be 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 sure, people. Even though we're evolving into our fifth year, we'll still keep the very similar approach that we've become accustomed to, and you become accustomed to. So oh, I don't think we're evolving. I think we're we're heading headfirst into a do a mosh pit with, with year five. Oh, man, that that could be some fun stuff, too. I'm telling you. Well, concerts are back, so we got to make up for lost time. 
That's right. That's right. Well, everyone, thanks for listening. We really appreciate you. Welcome to season five. And uh, as always, that was Scott. I'm Jason. And as always, you never know quite what to say. Just have yourself some liquid carnage. <laughs>